Okay, I want to show you two text functions. So I've got a panel on my UI, and let's just fill the background in with the color black. And then we'll set the color to white. And we'll store the area of our panel in a variable called a. We'll just use this dot get local bounds. And that will give us an array that contains the x, y width and height of the entire panel. So we can use this area in our future functions. So there are three functions for drawing text. We've got g dot draw text. And here we give it some text. So I'm just going to paste in some dummy text. And then we also give it the area. So we'll just put a. And if I hit F5, this draws all of the text on one line, but you can see when it can't fit it in the box, it just puts three dots at the end. So this is not very useful if you've got a lot of text to draw. Now, if you're just drawing a little bit of text, then that's probably going to fit in there okay, and you can see it centers the text automatically. The next function we've got for drawing text is g.drawAlignText. And here we can put some text. The area, again, we can give it whatever area we want. We're going to use the entire area of the panel. But now we can set the alignment of the text. So if we want it to be to the left, we can put the string in there left. So if I hit F5, it's now going to draw it to the left. If I change this to centered, it's now in the middle. And if I change this to right, it's now aligned to the right. And the third function to draw text is g.drawFittedText. And again, I'll put the long text string in here. In fact, let's put it in a variable so I don't have to, so it doesn't take up so much room in our function. So we'll call it t. So there's our long text string, t. Let's put it up there. And for our string here, then we'll put T. For our area, again, we'll put A. And again, we've got the choice of alignment. So we'll put left. Now this is max lines. How many lines do we want the text to be spread over? Let's put five. And for the float scale, for now we'll just put one and we'll see what happens with that in a moment. So you can see it spreads the text over one, two, three, four lines in this case, but it's got a maximum of five. It could spread it over. So if I change this to three, it now fits it on three lines, but it cuts it off. So a bit like the first one, which was cutting it off on a single line, this will cut it off on, um, well, however many lines you specify. So if we specify one line, now it's just like the very first uh, draw text function, but we can change the alignment. So we'll set that back to, uh, we'll set it to uh, five is what we had. So this last parameter is the horizontal scaling, how much you want the text to be squashed horizontally into the area that you've defined. So if you don't want any horizontal scaling, you can set this to one. If you want it to just use its default scaling, put it to zero. And in this case, it's the same, so we don't see any change. And then we can try just some in-between values to see what we get. So there isn't a lot of text here and it's a small space, so we're not going to see a lot until we get quite low, I'm imagining. Right, so there we go. So we get a weird output there. So let's uh, make this box a little larger and we can see if it scales any differently. So if I change the number of lines, we might see something more interesting. So there we go. So now we can see how it affects it horizontally. With different settings. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.